We've added 50 new action triggers. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what the new action triggers are and how to use them. These new action triggers can be grouped into three categories, taps, drags, and scales. These new taps include support for detecting taps on the secondary and tertiary buttons on the mouse, as well as force press for devices that support that. The new drag triggers support detection of horizontal and vertical drags, as well as pans, which are drags in any direction. And finally, scales. This is where the user uses two fingers a mouse or a trackpad to scale in or out. But not only have we added support for new triggers, but we have provided even more fine-grained control over existing triggers by giving you the ability to detect not just things like a tap, but also tap down, tap up, and tap cancel. So let's jump into an example and see how to set these up. In this example, we're gonna use this swipe to unlock design pattern. So the user will grab this handle and swipe it all the way to this edge. And the way we have this designed is we've got a stack in here, which just has this text right here, and then that handle right here. And then this background is being handled by this container. Okay, so how do we set these up? Well, the first step is to simply add a trigger like any trigger. But before we add it, there's one thing to keep in mind. And that is where we add this trigger will define the area where we will be listening for gestures. So you might think that we would want to add this gesture detector to this handle right here, but that's not what you want to do because we want to detect a horizontal swipe inside this whole area here. So we actually want to add it to this container up here. Okay, so let's go define it. So we're going to come into our action flow editor. Now we want a horizontal drag action trigger and and there's a bunch to choose from. Now, the horizontal drag down is when the user presses down their finger or the mouse. Then when they start dragging, this start action will be triggered. If it gets canceled in any way, then this cancel. And when the finger or pointer lifts up, then we get this end. Well, we wanna define this last one down here, which is update, that is, every time the user drags, this logic will be fired. And that's because whenever the user moves that little handle, we want it to actually move. So the gesture will be detected, this trigger will be fired, and then we'll update the position. Okay, so let's add that. Now, after you add a trigger, you're gonna have access to properties from those triggers. That is, when you drag or pan or scale, Flutterflow gives you properties that have changed, and those are found in this gesture detector. And as a side note, they're called gesture detectors because that's what they're called in Flutter. You are detecting a gesture. So Flutterflow exposes these values, we give them to you, and then normally you will update a variable you've defined with these values. So we would have a page state or a component state variable, and then we would update that variable with these values values in here. But before we do anything with these values, let's talk about what they are and what do we want to do with them. So here I've got this square here, this 400 by 400 pixel square, and it has an on pan trigger attached to it. And down here, I've added those gesture detector properties so that we can see what they are. Now, if I click out here and pan around, drag around, you see nothing happened because of course the trigger is only detecting gestures inside this cube. So if I click and drag around here, all of a sudden we see all of these values. Okay, so what do these mean? Well, this local position is telling us the number of pixels from the top left edge here. So you can see if I come down here to this middle, which should be about 200, we can see we're getting those values right here. Now, the global position is not telling us the distance from the top left edge of this trigger, but of the whole page. So up there. So you can see the screen I'm working on right now is this 1512 by 945. And so if I go over near the edge here, we're getting close to that value. And finally, we have the delta, and that's the change. This means on every update, every time my cursor moves, how much does it move? So you can see there it moved by 0.26 pixels in the X and minus 0.27 in the Y. Okay, so that's for the pan trigger. But you're going to have different properties exposed to you depending on what trigger you're using. So let's take a look at the scale trigger. 
So same setup here, we've got our scale trigger on this cube. If we click out here, there's nothing. But if we click in here, we can see we get these values. Now, typically this will be used for mobile devices where you can scale with two fingers. The scale gives you the scale factor, like you've scaled one times or two times the original size. It gives you the focal point, which is the global focal point, and the local focal point, which is the focal point inside that area where you define the action. And the focal point is simply the center spot between the two points of contact, like your two fingers, the center point between those. That's the focal point. Okay, so those are the properties we have, but what are we gonna do with them? And that brings us to our second step, computation. You see, typically you'll want to effect some visual change in the UI based on these values. Like in our demo, we're dragging the handle and we want the handle to move. The handle doesn't automatically move. We are given these properties and then we have to use those to make that UI change to actually move the handle. So we're given these properties, but you typically won't just use the bare values. And that's because you will often have to do some conversion or computation from one kind of value to another. Here's what I mean. In our demo, we're gonna be moving this handle using alignment. And alignment values are negative one to positive one, but the values from the trigger are pixel values, like global position or local position. So we need to transform or map these pixel values to alignment values. And we're gonna do that with a custom action. And I'll walk you through each line of code. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna control the movement of this handle through the alignment property right here. So right now it's set to minus one. If it's zero, it's in the middle, and plus one is over here. So we just need to write a custom action that that converts those pixel values to the alignment values. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so we know our return value is going to be a double because that's what our alignment accepts. And we need some value pass into this function, those pixel values that will end up being converted. And we'll use that local position property. So let's come in here. We're gonna call it local position X and this will be a double as well. Okay, great. Now let's just give this a name here. We'll call it convert to alignment X. All right, great. Let's grab this boilerplate and copy it to our editor. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the size of the area inside which we're gonna be dragging. Because having those local position pixels doesn't do us any good if we don't know how big the box is inside which we're dragging. And often the width of the area that will be dragged inside of will change depending on the device or window size. And to get that size, we need to include this build content Context. So let's grab that boilerplate again and just copy it in so now we have access to it. Okay, so how do we get this? Well, let me paste this code in and then we can talk about it. So this build context contains the location of the widget in the widget tree along with some helpful methods. And one of those methods is this find render object, which will return a render object. And we're casting it as a render box so that we can get its size. And we do that with this. So inside this drag widget width, we now have the width of that area that we defined our new trigger on. So even if the window changes or on different mobile devices, we'll always have the proper width. Now, one gotcha you might encounter here is not getting the right build context. And if we were to use this as it is now, we wouldn't get the build context of this container where we've defined this on horizontal drag update callback, because if we look at the code right here, we're gonna be getting the build context of this entire page. But there's a super simple way to fix this. You can just convert this to a component. So horizontal swipe component and create. Great, now we're just gonna remove the padding on this. We'll move that padding outside the component because if we kept it here, that build context would include that padding and we want just this container right here. And now this will give us the proper build context, the build context just of this component. Okay, let's jump back into the code. Next, we need to calculate the normalized X position. Now, what does that mean? Well, 
Well, normalization is the process of adjusting values measured on different scales to a common scale. In our project, we take the user's drag position, which is measured in pixels and can vary based on screen size and widget dimensions, and convert it into a standardized value between zero and one. By normalizing the position, we represent the drag position as a proportion of the total draggable area. For example, zero represents the far left of the draggable area, 0.5 represents the middle, and one represents the far right. Now, this is not the last step because we need to get it to that negative one, positive one, but we'll get there after this. So we're taking that local position, dividing it by the width of our draggable area, and just clamping it between zero and one to account for rounding errors. Okay, finally, we need to convert that normalized value to the alignment values. So we need to convert that zero to one range to that minus one to positive one range, you know, on the alignment. And we do that in two steps. First, we multiply the normalized X value by two in order to scale the range from zero to one to zero to two. And second, we subtract one in order to shift the range from zero to two to minus one to positive one matching the alignment scale. And that's it. And we can just return that alignment X value. Once more, just adding a clamp to account for rounding errors. Okay, great. So now we have this action that converts these values so we can set up our logic now. And to do that, we're gonna need a variable to write this value to. That is the swipe position, those alignment values. So we're gonna go into our app state right here and we've got this swipe position. Okay, great. So let's set up this logic. Okay, so we wanna go in here. We we already have our trigger added and we can add our custom action down here. And let's add that local position X from our gesture detector, local position X. And let's give this an output variable name, alignment value. Now we just need to write that to that swipe position variable we added. So app state right there. We wanna add this swipe position and set that value to the output of that action. Okay, great. Now we need to just bind that app state variable to alignment. So let's come in here to our handle right here and let's push this over here. But what we really want is we wanna bind this to our swipe position. All right, beautiful, let's test it out. Okay, so now when we take this and drag it, beautiful. We've got a great horizontal swipe. Now. It looks pretty good. And for many use cases, this could definitely be sufficient, but you might notice something. It's not exactly perfect. There's some variation here. And sometimes you need the pointer or finger to be locked in one-to-one -one pixel for pixel. Okay, but why isn't it perfect? Well, you see, it's not perfect because we're not taking into consideration the width of the handle. You see, right now, our horizontal drag trigger is listening for drags in this area. Let's say it's 400 pixels. So if your thumb drags from here to here, those X number of pixels, we're converting to an alignment value between minus one and one. But the problem is that minus one isn't just when the user taps here, but also here. Like this should be minus one too. The problem is we need to factor in the width of the handle. And it's actually pretty simple, just two extra lines of code. Okay, so let's go back to that action. The first thing we need to do is pass in the width of the handle. Okay, so let's add an argument here. We'll call it handle size and this will be a double as well. And we'll just grab this boilerplate right here and grab that. Okay, now let's paste it in. Great. Next, we need to adjust the width of the area that we're using for dragging, the drag widget width variable. And we're gonna subtract from that the width of the drag handle we pass in. That's because the actual draggable area shouldn't include the handle itself. This way it properly reflects the handle's movement within the widget. Finally, we need to account for the user's touch position. And we'll do that by subtracting half the handle size from the user's touch position. This shifts the reference point from where the user touches, which could be at the edge of the handle, to the center of the handle, ensuring that the alignment calculations are based on the handle's center. Okay, great, let's go save that. And because we have this handle size right here, we need to go pass that in. So let's double click into our component right here. Let's go to where that new trigger is defined. And now we have this handle size. So how big is it? Well, let's go look at our handle. So here's our handle and we can see that it's 40 pixels. Now I'm also gonna add in padding 
sitting right here, this four pixels and four pixels. So I'm gonna add that in too. So I'm gonna pass it in as 48. Okay, so let's open this up right here and this is gonna be 48 pixels. Okay, that's it, let's go test it out. All right, so now when we grab this and we drag it, it's locked one to one with our handle, beautiful. And that's how to use the new triggers in Flutterflow.